The Aviation Matters bring you all the latest information and events across the country under the Honorable Minister of Aviation on executives, policies, projects, and everything that's related to the aviation transportation industry. Stay tuned. On this week's Aviation Matters, we will be looking at the activities of the Nigerian Accident Investigation Bureau, the AIB. The AIB is under the supervision of the Federal Ministry of Aviation and is charged with the responsibility to investigate any civil aircraft accident and serious incidents arising out of or in the course of air navigation and occurring either in or over Nigeria or occurring to Nigerian aircraft elsewhere. The fundamental objective of the AIB is to improve aviation safety by determining the circumstances and causes of air accidents and serious incidents and providing safety recommendations intended to prevent reoccurrence of similar accidents. The purpose of this is not to apportion blame or liability. In the past, Accident investigations were conducted by the Civil Aviation Department of the Ministry of Aviation. The CAD also handled hairworthiness certification in addition to its investigative functions. These functions were separated to comply with ICAO Annex 8 Airworthiness of Aircraft and Annex 13 aircraft accident and incident investigation to avoid issues with objectivity. In 1989, the Federal Civil Aviation Authority, the FCAA, was created and the Civil Aviation Department became the Department of Safety Services within the new FCAA and a new investigative department, Accident Investigation Bureau, the AIB, was created under the Federal Ministry of Aviation. The Nigerian Civil Aviation Policy of 2001 recommended the creation of a financially independent Accident Investigation and Prevention Bureau which shall operate as an agency to guarantee expeditious response and movement of staff to accident sites. The policy also states that the Bureau shall be responsible for the investigation of aircraft accidents and serious incidents as well as publication of investigation reports. The Civil Aviation Act 2006 is the primary law that established the Accident Investigation Bureau as an autonomous agency that reports to the President of the Federation through the Honorable Minister of Aviation. The Bureau is headed by a commissioner who is also the Chief Executive Officer. The AIB Commissioner, Engineer Aki Olateru, gave an insight on the activities of the Bureau. Um, was uh, created in 2007 there the Civil Aviation Act of 2006. Our main function is to investigate accidents and serious incidents. And the whole essence of that investigation is to prevent reoccurrence uh, by issuing uh, the right safety recommendations uh, to relevant stakeholders to prevent the uh, reoccurring of that accident or serious incident. Engineer Aki Olateru said the Bureau has achieved a lot since he assumed office, which amongst them includes infrastructure, procurement of drones, release of accident reports, safety recommendations, and many more. So, in terms of infrastructure, uh, we added two more regional offices. Um, we set up what we call a command and control center in Lagos because Lagos has the highest aircraft movement in Nigeria. The federal government of Nigeria gracious to us they approve um, uh, the purchase of a mobile office unit whereby you can actually deploy to site because one of our handicap is you have an helicopter that crashes somewhere in the bush. How do you operate out of that bush? You know, so um, that's why we came up with this uh, idea to have a mobile office 
where it's going to have a toilet, there's a generator, there's a conference room in that office where you can do meetings, there's a fridge, there's a, a kettle, internet access, computers, printers, all the safety kits on board. So you just move that to the site. So that's, um, God willing, we pray we have more money, we can uh, at least have one more. So one would be in Lagos and one would be in Abuja, and that way we can deploy uh, to the nearest. Uh, so that's uh, in terms of infrastructure. We've upgraded our websites. Now you can go to our website and query uh, information. Mind you, all our reports are on our website. Um, so you can query, you can type in airline X and then it will give you all the reports, all the occurrences on that airline X. You can search by using a particular type of aircraft, which you, it will give you all the details as well. And then another thing we've done is to uh, procure drones. Uh, drones are extremely useful for accident investigation, especially at uh, the crash site. Uh, we use drones now to do what it calls um, um, safety assessment of the site so that it, it can you can see what kind of danger because you need to protect your staff as well. The staff will be exposed to, uh, and then you prepare with the right PPE before they go uh, into that uh, crash site. Two, it helps us to do area photography. It helps us to do mapping. And then it's, it's um, you can measure distances. You need to investigate accident, come up with safety recommendations, and ensure the repeat. It doesn't happen again. Ensure it doesn't repeat itself. That is the only essence of accident investigation. Uh, it's for safety. It is not to blame. It's not a blame game. Some people think, yes, you've investigated. Tell me who is at fault. Ours is not a portion blame. It's to enhance safety. And so that's our, our, our byproduct is safety recommendations. So again, when you look at the numbers, AIB was set up 2007, like I said. And up until 2016, AIB, up to January 2017, to be precise, AIB had released 19 final reports, right? And then since January 2017 till date, AIB had released 49%, uh, 49 final reports, and that gives a total of 72%. So you can imagine 2017 till date, we've done 72% of the total work done since um, yeah and the talk of safety recommendations um, we've issued 139 safety recommendations to aircraft manufacturers to airlines to NCA the airport authority service providers etc etc uh, while prior to January 2017 AIB had released 81 safe, issued 81 safety recommendations and that's about 36.8% that's one thing we do in AIB, and that's what we've been doing since I came on board, to review all our systems, processes, and procedures, including our regulation, including our manners, the way we do things. Now we've changed the way we, we, we do accident investigation. It's still in line with ICAR and X13, but we've introduced some few things now. It's completely different. And when you finish investigation, we do what they call group review. We bring in all the investigators together into a room. We we'll go page by page. We all sit down. We analyze the report. We critique it. We do all that before we now send it for proofreading. To proofread that report. They don't change any of our technical jargons, but they make sure it's a simple, clear, plain English and correct English language. And then we send it for 60 days to the stakeholders to comment. Let's hear from you. Do, did, did we do it the way it's supposed to be? Or are there any things you notice that we've missed? 
or the, is there any information you want to give us? You know, things like that. And then we come back again, we do a final review before we are uh, released to the world. So that way that we've put in a very good credibility to our product, which is the report. And now we rarely, rarely get any substantial comment from even aircraft manufacturer, engine manufacturers, stakeholders today, most times it's we don't have comments. That means we've done the report the way it's supposed to be. Hydra France signed uh, an MOU with us to help the Francophone countries when they need help because France is getting busier with their Airbus product and then the accident investigation agencies may not have time to help any of these francophone countries and that was part of the essence why they want us to, uh we sign an mou with them so we can help the francophone countries in case they need help um we we have a republic of benin that ceded all the investigation to nigeria uh if they have that's the mou we sign if there's any occurrence in the republic of benin nigeria as a country will step in and do that investigation for them. We've done that for South Tome and Principe. We've actually investigated a crash in South Tome and Principe. Uh, that was done effectively. Um, we have Sierra Leone. We've helped Sierra Leone to review, to set up. We've helped Gambia to set up their accident investigation bureau. We helped with the drafting of uh, the, uh, uh, we helped with the drafting of the rare regulation their acts and etc. Um, Ghana, a few weeks ago, came to Nigeria to learn from our source of story, and they were marveled. Federal government had approved the upgrade of material science and flight safety laboratories to enhance accident investigation in the aviation sector. To this, the commissioner said the Bureau has procured different laboratory equipment to help its investigations. Top of equipment. When I came on board, um, the flight safety lab was in comatose. It was dead. You could not even power the computer. The computer everything was dead. Um, we uh, came up, went back to the original manufacturer, the OEM and came up with a, a proposal, we agreed on the way forward, and then again, Federal uh, Executive Council approved the um, Back to Life program for the um, safety lab. And from this safety lab, we don't have to send uh, what we you call black box, the CVR and the FDR abroad anymore for download. We have it right here in Abuja, we can download CVRs, we can download FDR um, to aid our investigation. And this laboratory is first of its kind in Africa. It's rated, in terms of capability, it's rated number five in the world today. So it's a world-class flight safety lab. And it's accredited by ISAS International Safety Air Safety uh, International Society of Air Safety Investigators. Um, so that's, that's um, and through this, we've been assisting some countries as well, which I will come to that. Um, having this lab really, it helps us uh, human capital development. We can develop capacity locally as against, you know, capital flights because you pay for this stuff to be sent abroad and stuff like that. Number three is we get real-time information from the downloads. We don't have to wait for one country to send us the downloads and all that before. And then we can analyze uh, the, um, the data here. And then another good thing about this lab is we can, uh, through animation, we can recreate the events of the accident, which is something we find that, are very, very useful because it helps us in accident investigation. Another good thing about this lab is what makes it unique um, is it can actually download from uh, what we call damaged recorders. 
it has, it has a capability we can when a recorder is damaged due to impact due to whatever we can actually still get information from the chip and there are very very few countries in the world that has this capability uh if you we had guys from singapore uh, the investigators came here the last time and they were so marvel because singapore doesn't have what we have here in terms of capability the commissioner aki olateru said all is set for the launch of its world-class air accident investigation training institute as the project reaches 92 percent completion according to him the Burrell is setting up a training school, which is the first of its kind in the history of Africa. That will be the first in the entire region. We need to, because training, as you agree with me, training is key. Um, you need to constantly train your investigators so that their skills, because things change as you go along. So we, rather than... We do train in Cranfield University in the UK. We train in, um, in Southern California Safety Institute. We send some to Singapore Academy. And we felt, why can't we domesticate this? Why do we need to keep on for refresher courses, etc., uh, safety awareness courses, uh, hazard identification courses, ex also. And then we decided to form a training school uh, here in Abuja and it's to me it's going to be a world-class institution because we've got countries involved in developing the curriculum. We've um, um, Cranfield University has helped us as well, Singapore Training Academy, USNTSB, uh, that's our partners, uh, our colleagues in the US, they've helped in putting that curriculum together. Uh, supported with um it's going to have uh, 30 rooms four star so that because we want to attract um international investigators to come into nigeria i mean right now there is no school in africa where to train air accident investigators you need to send them to europe send them to singapore or you send them to america and this is what we're taking advantage of we should have our own in Africa, so we can bring them in, train them. We use it for ourselves. So it's going to be some form of IGR for AIB as we go along, so that we can earn some forex at the same time keep our forex exchange. When asked why the bureau has not been releasing reports on military crashes in Nigeria, he explained: AIB has come alive. Um, that's why when the military one happened, it's not. Our purview is not part of our mandate to investigate military crashes, uh, but the uh, the military invited us because they know we have what it takes to investigate uh, this property, and that's why they seated and uh, they called for assistance to help investigate uh, that crash, and we've done that, and the preliminary report has been submitted to the chief of air staff. Uh, you have to be, you have to understand the fact that this is a military crash, not civil. We cannot publicize that report unless we have the approval uh, of the military. So that is the only report we have not put out there. But every other report uh, back to 1990 whatever is on our on our website you're free to go it's free you can download it you can read it some student uses our report now for research uh if you go to Cranfield university some of our reports are being used as case studies today he called on other african countries that is yet to establish an aircraft accident investigation agencies to do so as it has numerous benefits attached to it thing with accident investigation is a very very expensive uh, process but there is so much to learn there is so much you can benefit as a nation because for people to fly they need to have confidence why are we having so much passengers traveling by air today 
because people don't have confidence traveling by road. Most roads, right? So people will fly. So now, but for people to continue to be flying, they must have confidence in air travel. And if we, which we've done, you look at the last six years, we've only had one fatal crash in Nigeria in terms of civil operation. There are very, very few countries in the world today that can boast of that record, so that safety record. So we've done excellently well in securing our airspace, in ensuring air travel is safe, and that has put in that, um, instilled that confidence in the, uh, in the minds of the traveling public. So for nations, they, some African countries still don't take accident investigation serious because I'll put it this way, they don't understand the benefit to the nation. And that's why we're encouraging some countries to come on board. And uh, we've set up what a, an association uh, called Bagaya. Uh, we have seven countries as members, Nigeria, Ghana, Sierra Leone, Guinea, Liberia, and uh, Gambia, and uh, uh, Cape Verde, right? These countries has come together to support one another. Uh, of course, Nigeria is leading. The AIB has commenced the process of revolutionizing air accidents and incidents reporting and investigation in Nigeria with the recent launch of its mobile app. The launch of the mobile application would enable the public to immediately report aircraft incident and accident to it directly rather than through a third party or any other social media. The launch of the app, which took place last year when the Bureau released final four accident reports, has been widely applauded by aviation stakeholders. Engineer Aki Olateru said the launch of the AIB mobile application remains one of the many processes to ease communication and providing a safer sky for the flying public. According to him, the application will enable anybody who has downloaded it to report any air crash or air incident to AIB for prompt investigation. He noted that if the AIB had quick access to information, it will prevent reoccurrence of serious incidents or accidents in the sector, stressing that the current management had done a lot to ensure improvement in that sector. came up with a mobile app whereby you don't need to come to our office. In the past, when there's an occurrence here in Sokoto, you need to come to AIB office in Abuja before you can make your notification. All that is gone now. You can actually go on our website and notify us. You can download AIB Nigeria app, which is uh, ISO, it's on uh, Android and uh, Apple Store, in Apple Store. And then you send us a notification. You can take pictures. We encourage passengers as well to download this AIB app because sometimes some passengers will give you a different perspective to the whole occurrence. So um, that's why we've been uh, trying to uh, market that to ensure every flying passenger has that on their phone because the day occurrence will happen, you may not have an answer. So um, and once that app is clicked, sent, um, it will hit 10 email addresses straight away, and that's the notification. Part of the notification goes to this command and control center. And from this same room, we can track our investigators and see which one is closest to this accident spot, and then we'll deploy straight away. So there's some form of tracker that we give to our investigators.